Hello and welcome to another tutorial video. Today we're going to be looking at uh, backing up our files with Windows 8.1 and also backing up the actual operating system itself. Windows 8.1 makes this really easy to do. First thing we'll go to is the control panel, system and security and here you see we have file history which is Windows 8.1's uh, way of saving files. First we'll turn it on, it's off by default and you see here we have a spare hard drive that we can copy files to, this is actually a second hard drive within my computer. Uh, you can also back up files to uh, USB drives, external hard drives or onto the network or if you have an external uh, drive somewhere else on your network you can back up files to that as well. So once it's switched on it will start saving files for the first time and we have some options we can change there as well. So if we go to select drive it will search for drives that you can back up your data to. And here we only have one drive which is my spare hard drive. But again here you would see other external drives if you had any installed and you could use those to back up to and also you have add network location where again if you have another location on your network that you want to back up your data to you can add it in there. We can exclude folders so if there's something we don't want backed up we can rule that out so if you just go see, exclude folders and then add those folders and even if the list of your computer's libraries and you can select so maybe I don't want my music backing up that's not that important it's not like pictures or uh, important word documents just add that in there click save changes and now it won't back up my music uh, in advanced settings we have how often it saved copies of the file uh, every hour by default uh, you can do daily, 12 hours, right through to every 10 minutes. So if you've got a lot of critical data you want backing up really regularly, maybe every 10 minutes is what you need. And again, if you're a bit more relaxed, then you can go as far as just every day. Uh, you have size of the offline catch. Uh, so the amount of disk space used. Default's probably fine for that. If you haven't got a lot of spare disk space, then I'd recommend lowering it down to just 2%. And if you've got terabytes upon terabytes of free disk space, then you can go up to like 10 or 20 percent. Uh, keep save versions uh, again, forever is set as the default, um, but you have other options such as until space is needed or over a set number of months. Uh, it's probably better, I think, to set this to something like every six months or a year so that older files that won't be needed are deleted eventually. Obviously, especially if it's documents or files that you regularly change, you're not going to need a copy that's two or more years old. So we'll just change that to every six months. We also have the option here to clean up versions. And here you can manually delete files that are of a set age. So if you do have it set to keep files forever, you can come in every so often and just manually delete the files that you want removed. If your computer is part of a home group, so part of a small network, and you want this drive used by all the computers to back up to, you can tick recommend this drive and it will be a location everyone can use. And in event logs we'll see a file history and we can actually monitor uh, what's happened with backups and if a backup ever fails you'll see a log of it there. That's just that loading up. So that's file history, so that's backing up all your files to another location. Now those event view have popped up. So then that's just showing any file history event. And actually a warning in here, I think we can look at if we go to event properties. And you can see what the event was. And if it's anything major, you can find out what's gone wrong. So, 
That's backing up our files, but what about the operating system? We might want to create a system image, which is basically an image of our operating system that we can use to restore our computer to should it have a major fault. And that's down here, that system image backup. Now again, you have several uh, options on where you can create the backup to. Again, if you've got a, a spare hard drive inside your computer, not the same hard drive that the operating system is installed on though, uh, or if you've got an external USB drive or another external hard drive, you've got those options here. Uh, again, you've got options if you've got uh, external network location that you want uh, the system image to be created to. You can create it there on the network. Or you can create it as a series of DVDs, which is quite a good option, I think, because although it might take up several DVDs, you'll have an actual physical copy you can lock away somewhere safe, well away from your computer, um, and keep it backed up and secure that way. I kind of think, like, oh, I've got a hard drive a second hard drive inside this computer if there was a really major fault that destroyed the entire machine I wouldn't have that second hard drive potentially to get my backup from whereas if I have it on a DVD that's separate it's somewhere else I think that's uh, a more secure backup that's more likely to be usable in the future so that's what we'll select so one more DVD if you click next and uh, here we get to select what we're going to back up to the DVD. So, we've got by default the system drive and the system reserve bits, that's the actual operating system and then we can select as well any of our backup uh, uh, secondary hard drives that are on the system. So here this new volume is the one that the file history is being backed up to. We could also select that if we wanted to be backed up as part of the system image. We just click next. So this backup is going to take 376 gigabytes of disk space, which is quite a lot. Just bear in mind that uh, I have a blank DVD disk in front of me and it has 4.7 uh, gigabytes of space on it. So if you're going to back up this much data to DVDs, it's going to take quite a few. Be like going back to the old days of having 20 or more floppy disks uh, with all your data stored on them. So I'll pop a blank disk in the drive and just click start backup and it will create the system image and then start burning it to the disk. Obviously if you're saving it to a network location or another hard drive it will just create the backup image and then save it to that hard drive location as well. that's really all there is to it, is creating a system image and the file history. I really recommend that you turn the file history on and you should definitely create a system backup as well to some location just in case the worst happens to your computer and you do need to get data back.